Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in this video, I'm going to talk about RE framework. So before we get into the details of RE framework and how that actually looks like and how that going to work in your projects. So I wanted to pick two major things like what and why. What is this RE framework and why we must use RE framework. So if you pick this term framework, so it's very specific term that you can understand like uh, it's just talks about a template in general right so it in the same way re framework is also one such template which is provided by ui path which you can use for any of your uh, automation processes that you can just uh, take this framework and you know you can customize that based on your requirements of the project so that's how you can use this re framework which is robotic enterprise framework and if you ask me why we must use this re framework so I can say any of the automation projects that you develop will not work 100% as expected, right? So that's where the exceptions comes into picture. So I can say the most important uh, capability that RE framework is having is the exception handling, robust exception handling. So uh, if you have a, a automation process that if it if you are expecting that it's going to work like as you expect and uh, if there are any exceptions that would occur. So it's very important to handle those exceptions gracefully, right? So in order to do that, we already have a predefined workflows that would handle them, uh, handle those exceptions. So that's where uh, the RE framework plays a major role. So uh, how easy it would be to understand and adapt instead of creating a new one. So that's where we can use RE framework as a part of our projects. So it's very simple and it's very interesting concept. So I would like to take you through all the modules that our RE framework provides and all the workflows that are there inside. And, uh, and by end of this playlist, you can understand like how this actually works and how you can make this project adaptable for any of the processes. And I can also make you uh, uh, take up a use case that where you can understand the things more in depth. So let's get into the studio and see how this actually looks like and how you can make use of this. So first of all, I have taken RE framework into my studio and this is how it looks like. And as I have said you, it provides some already developed XAMLs. Uh, so using these, you can uh, customize them based on your requirements. So let's see what it is already providing and what it actually meant. So you can make use of anything only if you understand the purpose of it, right? So let's see what are all these folders and how this will be used and where you can use that in your projects. So we have a folder called as data. So we know for any of the processes, data is very important. Data can be input or output or whatever the data it can be. So we have one more folder. So to make it more categorized, we have input folder where you can keep all your input data and whatever the output you are getting from the process, you can save it in the output folder. And sometimes we use the temporary data, right? Like where we just use it just for temporary purpose and then we will trash the data. So all those comes under the temporary purpose, temporary folder. And we have the config sheet, config Excel file here. So I would talk about config later because that's a huge and the most important concept that we will be using in the RE framework. So I don't want it to go into our config now. So let's get into the documentation folder. So we already have our documentation provided by UiPath. You can just check it out under this PDF file here. So which provides everything in detail about each and every bit of RE framework that you can go through under this uh, documentation folder. And as I have said about the exceptions, so whenever there's an exception, how easy it would be to troubleshoot if you have a screenshot of that exception instead of just a message. So all the screenshots that it would capture when an exception has occurred, that would be stored into a separate folder called as exception folder. And then we have the framework, as I've said you initially, that we have few XAMLs that were already pre-developed and given. So I can say these are some of the checkpoints that we should follow while automating any of the projects. So 
these were already developed and we can just have to make use of them that's it so we have close application close all applications get transaction data and or in it all applications in it all settings so these are few xamls which are already there i would go into each xaml and explain you what does it does and how you can customize it based on your project and later we have test folder so once after you develop the project the major thing that comes into picture is testing so we have to test this is this is a few unit as uh, xamls that were provided already so whatever the code that we are developing we have to test them so these uh, by making use of these xamls and then we have the main and process so this is the main xaml that i have opened up already and the process will be under process transaction uh, state so first of all uh, it looks like this and if i have to go in depth of each of the state so first i wanted to talk about something called as states and the transitions so whenever we are talking about this re framework the two major terminologies i often use are called as states and the transitions so this is how a state looks like and this is how a transition looks like so in order to move from one state to another state there's a link that's called as transition so we are moving from here to here when the result is successful and we are moving from here to here when there is an system exception occurred so that's how all these states are connected based on the output from one state to another state so that's how it looks like and let's see how it operates and i would uh, give a high level understanding of how what each state actually does and what is the you know significance of different states that we are using in the process so let's see this is a initialize once after we start from here we have the first and the foremost thing that is initialization so we all know that initialization is like before we start any process we have to do some mandatory things so it, the annotation here makes us understand what this initialization is all about and why we have to use this so we have uh, we can read the configuration file as i have mentioned in the data we have config so we can read configuration file and initialize applications used in the process so that's what actually happens in the initialization state so we would first read the configuration file and then we'll initialize applications and also the ma very major thing that we does here is kill all applications so whenever we starting any of the automation process there would be we will be initializing application but before to which we have to kill the previously existing applications why because when whenever we initialize a new application if there is already same application that's already opened up and if without killing it if we open this new one the, there may be a chance is that robot get confused because the uh, attach browser window has the same uh, title and the same uh, attributes would be the same for both of these uh, applications so there are chances that it may get confused and the the purpose wouldn't get survived so it's equally important to kill all the applications before you initialize the applications so all this comes under initialization so let's suppose the workflows which you have run inside the initialization have uh, executed without any exception then it would it would the output would be successful then it would go into the get transaction transaction data let's suppose if there is any system exception that has occurred then it will directly go to end process and the process would be ended there so what happen inside the get transaction data so let's suppose you have a huge data and each data is considered as a transaction inside this process so this get transaction data works as uh, a state which picks each transaction at a time and would be given to the next state so that's what happens in the get transaction data and this state would work until there is no data so let's suppose if there is a, a threshold that has occurred there is no data that uh, inside this then it would directly go to the end process until there is data it would come to the next state that is called as process transaction so this is a major part of our framework i can say because here uh, this is a state where the whole project lies in the whole process lies in this particular state so this is the uh, uh, place where uh, you know you have to keep the 
major logic of the project. So based on the output of this state, there are three different outputs. If, if you can just observe here, if everything goes fine, then the result would be the success. So if you just see the transition of this particular output, which is success, it is taking you to the get transaction data. That means you, if everything goes fine, if the output is success, you would go and pick next transaction item from the get transaction data state. Let's suppose there is a business exception. Okay, now we have two different types of exceptions that we are encountering here. Let me make you understand what are these two different exceptions and how we can differentiate between them. So as I have explained you, exception is nothing but uh, there is a situation where uh, the bot may not go as expected. So if you go in depth of it, there can be some situations which which can be expected. So let's suppose if you are opening an application and if you're trying to uh, log in and uh, maybe sometimes, you know, you forgot your password and you've entered the wrong password. So in such case, you would see an error like invalid username and password. So that is expected when you enter a wrong password. So that's uh, that's something which can happen if the username and password are not valid. So in such cases, we would say the bot, like this may happen if this happens through the business exception, right? So in such case, those are known as known exceptions. These are something which can be expected ahead. So that comes under the category called as business exceptions. So we would uh, tell the bot ahead that if something like this happens through a business exception. So in such case, that particular transaction doesn't be uh, valid and it would throw a business exception and the process would stop there for that particular transaction and it would pick the next transaction. So that's how business exception works. And now let's come to system exception. So what is system exception? It's basically an application exception. So there may be any scenario, like if you just open a website that uh, sometimes you can see uh, the page may not load properly and the data would be gibberish and it wouldn't be as you expected sometimes. And if there are any UI changes that happens for the website, then also uh, it couldn't able to capture the data. In such cases, the system exception would accept, which would occur. So these are basically some unknown exceptions. We cannot predict them ahead. So in such cases, uh, the system exception would be thrown. Uh, so these are handled by retrying one more time. So based on the queues that you define in the orchestrator, so the count of the queues would define how many times it has to retry. So based on the system exception, if there is any system exception that occurred at the process transaction state, it would go to the initialization state again. That means it would retry. So this count is defined in the orchestrator queue. So I would talk about orchestrator queue also in the future videos, but this is some high level idea that I wanted to give you about RE framework. How does it works? Uh, so this is how it looks like, and this is how the transitions uh, looks like, and there are different states here. So let's look into uh, each of the state in detail and make you understand what each state is define for what each state actually does and what are the different workflows are there and what are the different transitions and what how you can customize each transition so and also i would talk about i would wanted to pick a use case uh, so the input here can be queues and can be data table. So I wanted to pick a use case from Q and also from one from the data table to make things clearly understandable. So I believe uh, you are clear with the concept of high level understanding of RE framework, how this actually works. So in the future videos, I'm gonna talk about how this actually works and all. So I hope you found this video useful. So stay tuned to my channel for further upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.